On this post-Super Bowl episode of the Sports Mules, we'll discuss what the Chiefs did right, what the 49ers did wrong, and exactly how much of the halftime show did I not watch. Wake up, Mules Nation. Time to dig in. Welcome to the Sports Mules. I am, as always, your occasionally late, no one wants to date, resigns to his fate host, Eric Kiner. Welcome to the program. However you're listening, whenever you're listening, thank you for making this show a part of your day. I really do appreciate it. Uh, so today's episode, for the, I'm going to make two today because I've had a lot of coffee. So I'm super hyped up. And it's Friday, Friday fun day. My birthday's uh, next week on Tuesday. A birthday on a Taco Tuesday? I mean, what gets better than that? Uh, so this episode here is just going to be a quick breakdown of the Super Bowl and my thoughts and um, just what happened in that one and why I didn't watch the halftime show. And uh, and another reason this one was a little uh, late was I was going to finish it up yesterday and then uh, kind of everything that happened at the uh, parade uh, for the Chiefs the day before, I just... Uh, I just didn't think it was kind of right to to put it out at least the next day. But unfortunately, life goes on. And we'll touch on that uh, at the end real quick. Um, but yeah, I hope uh, everybody enjoyed themselves at their Super Bowl parties and uh, behaved themselves. Um, mine was, was interesting, uh, to say the least. And, uh, and by interesting, I mean it really wasn't. And... Um, couldn't uh don't really want to get into it i'm gonna have a sip of coffee out of my batman mug here while i do this but um yeah it was uh it was an interesting super bowl for sure but um you know i think that there were some good parts of the game uh, most notably the last uh, four minutes of the fourth quarter and then overtime. The rest of it was kind of a, uh, I don't really know how to say it. Uh, boring, maybe. Um, defensive struggle, sure. Um, cause for anyone to maybe pass out from nacho and beverage intake. Yeah, good timing for that. Um but yeah, there were definitely some moments uh, of the Super Bowl that were less than super. So let's dive into that, shall we? So for those of you uh, who no longer want to hear any of the sports stuff, this is your... Uh, I got to get one of those horns, those DJ horns. I have to get one of those. So that's kind of your signal to uh, to leave. But if you want to hear some football stuff, uh, let's get into it, shall we? So... Um, yeah, the game was unique in a few ways is, you know, you had this incredible offense, incredible defense, uh, but it seemed to be, uh, reversed there towards the end of the game. And you really did have one of those things, you know, they always talk about defense wins championships. And in this case, you would almost have to agree with that and it kind of it's difficult to find the flaw in that thinking the 49ers defense and the Chiefs offense while both extremely good obviously they make it to the Super Bowl they're not the strongest part of their respective teams right Chiefs defense is the leading part of that team right that that's why they've been successful all year was because of their defense, not necessarily their offense. Not to say their offense is bad, but that wasn't the reason for their success this season. Which is weird in the last, you know, uh, half a decade plus to say that about the Chiefs, but their defense was the thing. So Chiefs' offense wasn't the leader. It's kind of the same thing on the opposite side uh, of the ball for the 49ers, right? Their defense, although good, very, very good, was not the reason that they were super successful, right? It was their offense. So you have this good offense versus good defense. And they're kind of butting heads, and it's kind of a stalemate. And then, you know, when, when the tables are turned, how the turn tables. And, you know, 49ers offense, this juggernaut is on the field against 
the Chiefs defense, which is this juggernaut, you know, this incredibly young team, um, you know, Steve Spagnola it just figures out how to get things done, makes incredible in-game adjustments. Great game planning beforehand, but he's also very quick in games to be like, okay, this isn't working. Let's do this. Let's try something different. Um, and you get these two, you know, Titans kind of battling each other. And again, another stalemate on that one. And, you know, the 49ers in the first half, a lot of penalties that kind of, you know, kill themselves uh, and slow themselves down. And then that Chiefs defense gets a little breath or gets that break they need. And then, that you know, the men don't break. They hold them off. First half, only 10 points when it probably could have and should have been a lot worse because the Chiefs' offense was absolutely terrible in the first half. They looked completely lost. Uh, they looked like the game was, you know, was supposed to be this Sunday, not last Sunday. Um, they were just super struggle bus. And, uh, again, it's one of those things where the 49ers did not take care of their opportunities defensively, Right. Their defense is holding them, uh, you know, holding this this great Chiefs offense, and you know they're doing their job, and then getting the ball back to the offense. A lot of times in, in relatively good field position, and then the offense can't you know take advantage of all that. And I can tell you as a you know well I coached everything, but mostly defense, right? You, no matter how good your defense is, if you guys are, you know, have to keep going out there, they're gonna they're gonna get tired and they're gonna make a mistake here and there. It's just gonna happen, right? It's like Russian roulette. You keep throwing them out there. Something's gonna happen at some point. But they held their own in the first half, and then again, much like last year, where the Eagles were up, and you know the old Wiley Chiefs of all these old school and you know old time coaches go in the second half. They know what to do. They make their adjustments. They don't panic. They come out in the second half. You know, they excel. They win the game last year, and then they win this year. And, you know, because they did the same thing. They went in. They kept everybody calm. It was a bad first half, but they kept everybody calm. They made their adjustments. They made their changes. Came out the second half. Defense continued to do their job, what they were doing. Offense finally kicks it up a little bit. Uh, you know, they, they go ahead there. Uh, 49ers come back, the, the, the missed extra point, um, you know, allows it to be tied and then allows it to go into overtime. I don't really blame the kicker. I know he's had a lot of problems and this will probably be the first and last time you ever hear me say these words, but I don't blame the kicker. It got blocked. Um, was it probably a little bit too low of a kick? Eh, maybe, but, uh, you know, the, the chief special teams get paid too. So, um, yeah, so they, you know, we get tied, we go into overtime, second overtime in Super Bowl history. At that point, it, it becomes this epic battle, right? Of of wills, who is going to break first? You know, who's going to break? Who's going to bend? Who's going to blink first? And this is when you get into. You have to pay attention to the rules, right? Much like life, life's about technicalities, right? Legalities and technicalities. Sports are no different. If you know the rules, right? If you know the rules, that gives you an advantage over somebody who just kind of thinks, I remember they said something about that. The Chiefs, because Andy Reid, I believe, is still on the um, uh, committee for, you know, when they go through and they make their rule changes and all those type of things. I believe he's still on that, that committee. So he knows it, right? Just like Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick was on that. He knew the rules. And so Andy Reid knows them all. They talked about the new playoff overtime, right? Not just overtime in general, but playoff overtime rules. They talked about it a few times during the season. And then he said, his player said that during the postseason, like twice a week before every game, they discussed it. They knew the playoff rules. So going into the overtime... They knew it. Four Niners players came out and have stated as much as that they didn't really know. They thought it was the same thing. You know, hey, you got it first, you scored a touchdown, you won. They didn't know the rules that no matter what, the Chiefs were going to get the ball. Uh, and then I heard some ridiculous, you know, trying to, you know, change change history that uh, somebody on the 49ers staff was like, well, we wanted, we, we accepted the ball first because uh, we wanted the ball third. 
the fuck does that mean? Like, that's just the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You wanted the ball first so that you could have the ball third. Essentially, that what they were saying is that we figure we'll score a touchdown and they'll, they'll score a touchdown. So then whatever, whoever scores next wins the game. So if we have the ball third, we get it, we kick a field goal, then we win. One, great, great attitude to have to immediately go, we're probably going to give up a touchdown defensively instead of saying, you know, we'll, we'll stop them. Any hoot, um, but they didn't know the rules. Uh, so they got the ball first. And if you watch any of the video of Patrick Mahomes after the overtime coin toss when 49ers win, and they say, we want the ball. And even the ref gives a quick look, you want the ball? And they go, yep. They take the ball, and Patrick Mahomes run the side. He goes, they wanted it first. They wanted the ball first. Um, so they get the ball first. They are driving down the field. They do have the ability. They could have scored a touchdown. But again, Chiefs defense, right? You know, Ben don't break. They they gather themselves. They force the field goal. Chiefs get the ball, march down. Patrick Mahomes, and you know this this is what you pretend to do when you're a kid growing up. Is that you know it's the fourth quarter, or you're in overtime of the Super Bowl, and you've got the ball to drive to win the game. He has it. He's living the dream. Uh, a couple close third and fourth down calls. He uses his feet. He get, he picks up massive. He picks up first downs. He picks up massive chunks of yards. And then essentially the play they run to win the game and the Super Bowl is very similar to the game that they ran last year that put them ahead uh, against the Eagles to win the Super Bowl. So essentially in back to back years, Andy Reid has called the same play to win the Super Bowl. Um. You know, it's a it's a little uh, you know in out motion from the you know, the ex receiver. I don't want to get too technical for you here, but you know the boundary side receiver. You know, motions in, tries to bring in the corner with him. He comes in when the second he starts moving in, corner puts his eyes in because he thinks you know the ball's going away from him, so he's trying to see what's coming back out. But he loses contact with his guy, his receiver, because he thinks he's either going in motion or getting ready to come up and block him. He comes in, he spins right back out. By that time, you've lost leverage. He's got outside, toss the ball to him, boom. You know, congratulations, you're Super Bowl champs. Very similar to what they ran last year, except that they ran it to the field side, but basically the same thing. Z receiver came in, runs in motion. They take it back out. He's got leverage, throws it to him, boom, they're in, touchdown. So congrats uh, to Andy Reid. And I think it was, uh, I think the route's called uh, like corn dog or something like that. I mean, how do you not root for a, a, a play called corn dog? Um. But yeah, it, it shows again, and I've I stated this a few times, Kyle Shanahan, offensive genius, but there are points in games where he still makes deci- coaching decision mistakes that, like this, prove to lose you the game and this one, the Super Bowl, the championship. And um, this is, I think, what they said, what, the, the, the fourth kind of championship game where they've had a massive lead and have blown it, or at least for Kyle Shanahan. I mean, obviously, there's this year they were up by 10 in the first half, end up losing the game. They were up by 10 the last time they played in the Super Bowl in the fourth quarter, end up losing the game. Uh, there's, you know, 28-3. to three. You're welcome, New England. I'm sorry, Atlanta, because um, Kyle Shanahan was the OC of the Falcons in that game. Uh, and I, there was one other one they mentioned, but just another one of these, again, right? These situations where he is up big in games and then for whatever reason, and the the Falcons won, he's not the head coach, right? Head coach can make, he may want to do something. Head coach can, you know, nix it. And then that's how it goes. But you're the head coach and the, basically the offensive coordinator for the 49ers all these years. You're the one making these decisions. So whenever you call the dogs off or you start making other, this is on you. So, Again, this is another one where you don't know the rules and you make a a what seems like a small incorrect decision, but at a key moment, and it comes back to to bite you in the butt. So, um, yeah, they they really well we'll never know now, right? But uh, it, it's it's one of these things where again, right? Decisions matter, and knowing the rules are key, and they they seem to have failed at both of those at that moment. So 
So much for the 49ers. There's always next year. But is there really a next year for this 49ers team? So for the 49ers already, right, since the season has ended just a few days ago, um, there has been a large number of the 49ers staff who have left for a variety of reasons. Um, they let their defensive coordinator go uh, on Tuesday, I believe it was, Monday or Tuesday. It was earlier in this week. Um, and, and to me, that's kind of a knee-jerk reaction. I, I Again, I thought they had a very good defense. Um, th- there were a few times in the game where you kind of question what they're calling, but th- that's any team and any game. Uh, so me to, you know, have that performance and then fire the defensive coordinator, I guess it's because you can't fire the offensive coordinator. Um, but uh, that one seemed a little bit too much for me. And then they've lost, they have lost their technical, uh, you know, offense coordinator and quarterback coach, and they've lost some other offensive line coaches. And uh, who else have they? They've lost a few other people to promotions to other schools, other jobs. They've gone back to some of them taking college positions. Some of them moved on to um, other NFL jobs uh, for a step up. So that staff has has massively changed in five days since the Super Bowl has ended. So there's a lot to figure out there because for some positions, it doesn't seem like that big of a change, right? O-line coach or D-line coach goes or secondary coach And you think, I don't really understand what the big deal is. So what you find some other guy to come in here and do it. But um, your players and, you know, and also, right, depends on your your coordinator. But that coordinator to position coach, position coach to player relationship is key and pivotal, right? Because the staff spend so much time with each other, right? I'll... Take me as an example, right? You spend so much time with your defensive coordinator uh, in the season, and if you've worked together for a few years or a decade, you you know what they like. You know what they want. You know what they're thinking. Uh, They start to mention something. You already know what direction they're going to go in because you've had that time together, right? You've built that relationship, and you become, you know, a, a mini version of them to some extent, right? And then you are the representative of the coordinator to the players to get that vision across of what they want and how it all ties together. But then the players also get to know you in kind of the same fashion, right? They spend so much time with you and doing drills and doing film and breakdown and, uh, and practice and you know working on technique. They, they know you as well and they know what you like and how you want things and what they need to do. And when all that starts to change, some players don't want to be around that anymore. Some players don't like new guys that come in. That's not how we used to do it. Or, you know, you have to start that whole process, right? It's like, it's got breaking up, you know, you got to go back in the dating world and you got to start this nonsense all over again. And yet, so do you like music? No, I'm the one person on earth that doesn't like music, but you have to go all throughout that again. So it just makes things unstable compared to the chiefs who, as far as I've heard, Nobody's leaving. Again, right, you'll probably lose some lower-level guys, some assistant, this, that, the other will probably go to to move up, as they should. That's the process, right? And to some extent, uh, you know, you're in the NFL or a major college football program, uh, you want to see your guys succeed and go off and do, you know, move up and, and do something else, right? It's like being a parent. You're like, hey, I've raised you, and I'm, I'm happy to see you go. I would love to have you here. But to see you go off somewhere else and, and start to live your best life and succeed, I'm even I'm super proud of that as well. But Chiefs, I mean, Andy Reid's not going anywhere. He said so. And he's also, again, right, de facto OC, so that's good. Uh, Steve Spagnuolo, I don't think he's going anywhere. Why would he? He's living the best life. I mean, if he got another chance to be a head coach. You know, he was the head coach of the St. Louis Rams for a little bit, and that was a debacle. But if I'm – him and somebody goes, Hey, you want to be a head coach? No, why would I? I get paid great here, work for a great organization, great fan base. We're clearly winning. I've got this incredible young team. Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm set. Um, so 49ers staff 
in disarray at the moment. Uh, Chiefs, you know, it's it's Friday, it's just another Friday, business as usual. Um, so I, I think again, right? That's been why have the Chiefs been so successful the last decade. Stability. It's the same people, same mindset. Everybody's you know on the program together. So that that's that's key. And I th- that's key because you have things like um, Kelsey screaming at Andy Reid on the sidelines. And from an outside view, you see that and you're like, oh, my God, that's insane. That's crazy disrespectful. Um, but from a coach player perspective... And to know what he was talking about, what he's upset about, right? You are in the Super Bowl. This is the moment. And you're not getting put in for whatever reasons. And you're a massive competitor. Like you're like, you want in. You want in. You want to be a part of the battle. I don't want to be standing on the side. Put me in. I can do this. I can do this. And that's the heat of those moments, right? Was it right? Was it correct? Probably not. I, I would, uh, you know... If you ask Kelsey, I haven't seen if he said anything. I know they had their podcast, but I don't know if he said anything about it, but I'm sure he's not super happy about it. I'm sure he's a little bit uh, embarrassed about the situation. And I'm sure he's him and Andy have talked about it. I'm sure he's apologized for it because that's what you do. Heat in a moment, you're fired up later on. You go, I'm, I'm, you know, that's on me. my bad. I shouldn't have done that. I'm so sorry. Uh, you know, that's super disrespectful. I appreciate everything you've done for me. Yada, yada, yada. Um, but they have that connection because, again, they've been together so long. And they can do those type of things that a lot of people are can't if you have instability in your staff and your players moving around. And then on kind of the flip side of that coin, I mean, Patrick Mahomes, you know, stays, you know, cool as a cucumber inside of a volcano. Like, he didn't seem phased at all in that game. We've seen other parts of the season where he's been super upset and super animated on the sidelines about things are going on. He was super, he seemed super cool on that sideline. The entire time. And I, again, I, I think it shows years of, of being a vet, years of being in this situation, years of having played, you know, this is a four Super Bowl that he's played in now. And to be in that moment and be like, it's okay. It's okay. Come out here, do our job, stay calm. We're fine. Uh, I, you know, I think, again, that's one of the reasons why they've been so successful is because you ha- you go through those battles and it's not anything new to you. You just go, no, this is, yeah, we're okay. We're okay. We've planned for this. We're fine. And you go on the other side of the ball with Brock Purdy, who give that young man some credit and some props because – you know, everyone talk, has talked about, you know, the last two years, Mr. Irrelevant, last guy drafted, he's this, that, and the other. You know, I think I get paid more in a season than he does. Gets to the Super Bowl, and he doesn't look flustered. He doesn't look panic. He made incredible throws. He just got crazy pressure, and, you know, he got disrupted. Go go ask, uh, you know, half the other quarterbacks in the uh, – the AFC, how they feel, right? That's just what the Chiefs' defense does. So incredible props to uh, Brock Purdy, who just looked like a total pro out there um, and just handled everything with class and and, uh, just, you know, there's nothing more that you can ask. I mean, I'm sure on draft day, as he's waiting there on the third day, uh, just never getting called. He's outside playing fucking pickleball or whatever he was doing. It's like, hey, the 49ers drafted you. If he thought from that moment that, you know, two years later he would be, you know, disapp- massively disappointed, but, you know, walking off the field after losing the Super Bowl in overtime on the last play of the game, I- I'm sure he would have signed up for that, uh, as I'm sure everybody else with their uh, script conspiracy theories thinks as well. But uh, just... Purdy looked fantastic out there, and, and I do hope that he has a successful career. But we'll see. We'll see next year um, how things start to go out. And uh, I'll, I'll just close out here with with one more thing. Um, Steve Spagnuolo is now a four time Super Bowl champ, three with the Chiefs, one with the Giants. Uh, you know, he led the you know eighteen and O Giants 
to defeat the Patriots. And this man, um, you know, he, he knew, he knows what to do. He knows how to game plan. Uh, he knows how to prep. And like I said before, he, he does the things that sound like it should be common sense. But as we all know, common sense is not as common as you think. And he will make quick decisions and sometimes radical decisions in games when something's not working, right? You have your game plan. It doesn't start working. All right, he'll, he'll move on, right? He's not going to stay with something until the end of time. And, you know, th- this is four Super Bowls now. This man has been uh, the leading cause of, of incredible defenses. And if, you know, at the time, if the Chiefs had offensive line, I mean, he may have five Super Bowls. God knows how they would have done against Brady a few years ago. That was the key. Uh, just offensive line for the Chiefs was trash at the time. Um, but he, he's just an incredible, incredible defensive coordinator. Uh, again, I think more respect needs to go to him. And I'm not just saying that because he uh, coached at Lafayette uh, for a few years, which is literally if I walk out my front door, I can look up the, the street, up the hill, and there's Lafayette there. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think that uh, Steve Spagnuolo should start to get, not that he doesn't get respect, but he should get more respect in the respect that he deserves for these incredible defenses that he throws out, whether he's got incredible young talent like he has this year and last year or the kind of piecemeal that he's had to do throughout the years uh, to keep his, his side of the ball relevant and doing their job. Um, just phenomenal work, and, and he, you know, he deserves a little bit more respect put some respect on my name and we'll just um before we finish finish i just wanted to touch on this real quick like i said part of the reason why i didn't finish this and put this out yesterday was uh because of everything that happened at the parade for the chiefs the day before if you don't know you're not aware there was um, you know, uh, immediately following the end of the Chiefs uh, championship parade and they come up and everybody, you know, gives their speeches and hoot and hollers and we're going to do this again. Uh, there was a shooting um, at the parade, you know, at the at the gathering at the end. Um, and last time I saw, I think they said there was uh, 22 people had been shot. There have been more that had been injured, obviously, from, you know, the you know, the stampede that occurs from it and people get, you know, trampled on and, you know, racked and everything else. Uh, but 22 people had been shot, eight of which uh, were children. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, one woman uh, passed away. And uh, I believe there is two or three more people still in critical, last time I heard. Um, this is just insane right and this is no i'm not going to go on a pro-gun anti-gun rant that's not what this is but the fact that we cannot go to an event like this and enjoy ourselves and feel relatively safe and protected when there's police all over the place and are checking people and checking access and the fact that we can't feel safe with this is it's unacceptable and i know Everybody says this, and I don't want to hear this thoughts and prayers horseshit um, because it didn't do anything. It's like throwing a penny in a well. Um, And I'm upset about the whole thing, right? I'm upset that this nonsense happens. I I, I feel horrible for this uh, woman's family um, that lost her because of this. Um, The fact that eight children... We're, we're hit with gunfire is unacceptable on a level I can't even fully explain or express. And from the stories I've heard so far, right, I don't want to speculate, I don't want to get too much, but uh, from what I've heard, this was all, right, this was no terrorism, this was no somebody purposely coming to have a mass shootout um, or anything off the bat nefarious 
uh, from what I've heard, there was two or three armed individuals who came legally carrying, armed themselves, um, as is their right. That's fine. Um, but they somehow got into uh, a dispute, disagreement with one another, and then decided to open fire in this crowded event because they were probably boozed up, carrying firearms, got mad uh, because uh, somebody said Taylor Swift and was sick of hearing it, and somebody thought that the team last year was a better team than this year. Whatever idiotic argument they got into and decided to shoot it out like it was the fucking OK Corral. Um, and then, you know, this chaos ensues where all these people get hit, all these children are injured, somebody loses their life. You've ruined this incredible day and incredible experience. You have changed people's lives forever, including your own and your families, because you don't have the discipline to behave yourself when you have these things, right? You're carrying this weapon around, and you don't know what you're doing. You don't know how to control yourself either with the gun or your temper or your booze or whatever. And this is what you cause. So I hope you go to jail for eternity. I hope you, I, I don't even want to say what I hope happens to you in jail, but I hope you just don't have a really great time. And I'm just tired of hearing this stuff. I'm sick of dealing with this shit all the time. Uh, this, it, it's just insane that we have to have these fucking conversations. We have to discuss this stuff because people can't control themselves. And I guarantee it's already been the, you know, the, you know, oh, this is why we need gun regulations. Uh, no, the only thing that stops a, a bad guy with a gun is a good guy. Gun. Well, these are apparently good guys with guns who decided to act like fucking idiots. So next time, just take it and just shoot yourself then. I know that's harsh, but I'm sick of this shit. So enjoy prison. Uh, I hope you're rot there. And uh, to everybody who was affected by this, not you know, not only the you know the people who were injured and, and the these fucking kids, these poor kids, goddamn. And this family of this woman that lost her life, but everybody else there who is now, you know, never going to be the same as well. Because three people couldn't control themselves. Just. I love this country. But goddamn, do better. Well, that's it for episode one. Sorry to end on such a downer. But, you know, I didn't do it. But somebody has to talk about it in a somewhat common sense, tired of this nonsense tone of voice. But uh, that's it for episode one. Now I'm going to go pound the rest of this coffee and uh, maybe do some work. Maybe. All right. I'm on the edge. We'll see. And, uh, and then we'll get the second one fired up here because that's how much I love you guys is that I think you deserve to hear me twice in one week. Who doesn't want to hear this voice coming through your speakers or your headphones or your prison walls, whatever it happens to be. So uh, thank you for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you don't listen to the other episode, uh, vice versa. Uh, I hope you have a great weekend. Again, it's the beginning of birthday week this weekend. So for me, celebrate my birthday for me, even if you're not with me. Go out, have some tacos, drink some good gin. Good gin. Don't get that bathtub stuff. And, uh, yeah, we will be back next week with some more stuff. And, you know, leave some some comments about what else. You know, football season's over. we got to start to transition into, you know, we got college basketball. we got uh, NBA coming and NHL is going through their all-star weekends. So we have a lot of other stuff to start getting into other than football and baseball. Uh, spoiler alert for the next episode but yeah get out there enjoy your weekend have fun be safe dig in 
Go Mules.